The Sony FX8 has quickly become one of the hottest topics in the filmmaking community in 2025, and for good reason. Rumors suggest that Sony is preparing a cinema camera unlike anything we've seen in its compact line, combining cutting-edge resolution with flexible shooting options that could appeal to high-end productions, visual effects artists, and filmmakers looking for the next leap forward. If the leaks hold true, the Sony FX8 won't just be another upgrade, it could mark a new phase in how Sony approaches cinema imaging. At the center of these rumors is a bold claim. The FX8 may feature a full-frame sensor with around 96 million pixels, which would put it firmly in the 12K class. This kind of resolution is virtually unheard of in a compact cinema camera. For comparison, the FX6 and FX9, Sony's popular workhorses in the same family, never aimed this high in pixel count. Instead, Sony seems to be targeting a new philosophy with the FX8, maximize resolution and flexibility, while leaning on external recording options for the most demanding workflows. According to reports, the internal recording system may be built around Sony's reliable XVC codex, with rumored recording modes of 8K at 30p and 4K at 60p in full frame or Super 35 formats. For filmmakers who want extreme slow motion, the FX8 could offer 4K at 120p, though this would require using a crop 3.8K readout of the full frame sensor. Where things get really interesting is in the external capabilities. The camera is expected to output 16-bit RAW over SDI at specific frame rates and crop modes, giving professionals the kind of high-bit depth flexibility required for post-production heavy projects like visual effects, compositing, or high-end grading. In short, the leaks suggest that Sony is taking a different approach with the FX8. Rather than packing every recording option into the body itself, the company is focusing on giving users a super high-resolution sensor with room to grow, while encouraging the use of external recorders for top-tier workflows. It's a balance between practicality and raw creative headroom, and it's likely to appeal to larger productions with established pipelines. The potential benefits of a 12K full-frame sensor can't be overstated. First, such a massive pixel count allows for aggressive downsampling to more common deliverables like 8K and 4K. Downsampled footage generally offers cleaner images with less noise and more detail, while also allowing filmmakers greater freedom in post-production. Reframing shots, stabilizing handheld footage, or cropping for different aspect ratios all become easier when you start with such a high-resolution master. The FX8 also supports Super 35 shooting modes, which is a major plus for cinematographers who prefer the classic depth of field and lens options that format provides. Of course, higher resolution comes with challenges. Sensors with this many pixels generate huge data rates and demand extremely fast processing pipelines. Heat management also becomes a critical concern. If not handled well, high megapixel sensors can suffer from slow readout speeds, which in turn can lead to rolling shutter artifacts. This has been an issue for many cameras in the past. But Sony's recent advances in stacked sensor technology suggest the company may have found a balance. Even so, these limitations are part of the reason why the FX8 appears to offload much of its heaviest work to external recorders, where larger data rates and bit depths can be handled more efficiently. When comparing the rumored FX8 to Canon's C50, the philosophical differences in design become very clear. The Canon EOS C50 is also a compact full-frame cinema camera, but it's built on a different foundation. It reportedly uses a 32-megapixel sensor and prioritizes internal video recording power. Canon's design philosophy for the C50 is to make it a self-contained production tool. It supports internal 7K RAW recording up to 60p, 4K at 120p high frame rate recording, and makes use of Canon's well-regarded dual-pixel AF2 autofocus system. Canon also provides Cinema RAW Lite as an internal codec option, ensuring that filmmakers can get high-quality RAW footage without needing an external recorder. For many shooters, this kind of convenience is invaluable, especially for smaller crews or solo operators. The FX8, by contrast, looks to trade convenience for flexibility. While the C50 is designed to be a compact all-in-one system that delivers raw power directly in camera, 
The FX8 pushes for extreme resolution and hands over the most demanding tasks to external recorders. This split highlights a very real division in the cinema market. Some filmmakers want maximum self-contained recording power. Others prioritize sheer resolution and flexibility, even if that means relying on additional gear. Then there's Fujifilm, which recently made waves with its entry into cinema through the GFX Eterna 55. This camera takes yet another approach, built around a medium format sensor rather than full frame. Medium format sensors are physically larger, which gives them a distinctive aesthetic, greater dynamic range, smoother tonality, and a more cinematic feel that many cinematographers prize. Fujifilm's camera offers 8K internal recording and benefits from the company's beloved film simulation color science. The target audience is clear. High-end cinematographers who want the medium format look and are willing to deal with the larger lens, rigs, and costs that come with it. Comparing Fujifilm's GFX55 to Sony's FX8 reveals a fascinating contrast. The GFX55 sells itself on image tonality and the unique character of medium format. The FX8, if rumors are true, sells itself on extreme resolution and post-production flexibility. Fujifilm's solution is an in-body cinema experience with beautiful internal codecs, while Sony's is about giving you maximum pixel density to use however you want, though only if you're willing to manage external recording systems. For cinematographers, the choice between these two might come down to what they value most, a distinctive image looks straight out of the camera, or massive resolution that opens up endless options in post. And finally, we have Nikon's recent move into cinema with the ZR, developed in partnership with RED. This camera has already turned heads for its unusual approach. Instead of chasing extreme resolution, the ZR uses a 24 to 25 megapixel stacked full-frame sensor but prioritizes RAW integration and a video-first design. The standout feature is its ability to record RED's proprietary RAW formats R3D slash redcode internally giving shooters a compact body with direct access to RED's legendary workflow. The ZR offers features like 6K 60RAW and 4K 120 recording, high dynamic range, and a compact design that appeals to both single operators and small crews. For filmmakers already invested in RED's ecosystem, the ZR makes a lot of sense. The contrast here with Sony's FX8 is once again stark. Nikon's ZR is all about compactness and internal RAW convenience, making it appealing to creators who want RED integration without a massive rig. The FX8, on the other hand, appears to be all about scale, high resolution, external workflows, and massive creative headroom for those who can handle the data. For a filmmaker deciding between these two, the question is simple. Do you want ease and simplicity, or do you want the most pixels possible for maximum flexibility? What these rumors show most clearly is Sony's philosophy in cinema design. The FX8, if real, won't try to do everything in one box. Instead, it will prioritize extreme resolution and flexible workflows, relying on Sony's broader ecosystem of tools and accessories to fill in the gaps. It's a different philosophy than Canon, Nikon, or Fujifilm, but one that may prove very attractive to filmmakers who see resolution as the ultimate creative asset.